Well, welcome back. In this session, I'm going to teach you about tools that are useful for asking questions concerning distances. And one tool is a generate near table. So from last time, we have uh, two point layers. So we've got our test polygons, these four points, and then we have our test uh, small polygons label, so all these points. So let's say for each of these red points, we want to find the two closest of these black points. So we can use the generate near table tool to create a table for every red point, go out and find the two closest black points. So our input are the points we're interested in. For each of these points, we want to know what's the nearest of these points. And then that will output to a table. So I'll go to a geodatabase. And I'll call this closest two points table. And then the default is find only the closest feature. So here we're going to find the two closest features. So we'll uncheck find the closest feature and specify find the two closest feature. And then also return the XY coordinate of the closest point and return the angle to the closest point. And all that will be stored in this table and then just OK. OK, the resulting table is 800 rows because we had 400 red points. And for each of these 400 red points, we wanted to find the closest two points. So that will give us 800 rows. And then uh, that would be the input feature ID. So this is our first point. So for the first point, the closest point that's of the four black points would be this one with feature ID 1, and the distance was 1.76. And this was the XY coordinate of the closest point, and then the angle to the closest point. So we'll look at that. We'll zoom in on feature ID 1, and we'll label our black points based on feature IDs. So I select my first point, and then selection, zoom to selected feature. So here's the first point, and then feature ID to the nearest feature would be this point here. So we can use the measure tool. So the distance from this point to that point is indeed 1.76794 meters, and the angle is 45 degrees. So if we look at, here's our angle of 45 degrees. And the location of that point is 0 .5, 0 .5. So that's the XY coordinates of that. Okay, another tool that we'll use quite often is the buffer tool. And that allows you to ask questions about some threshold distance. So for example, for these points, um, give us the area that's within 0.6 meters of each point. And the output from the buffer tool will always be a polygon. So we'll drag our four points layer as the input, and we'll specify 0 0.6 meters as our buffer distance. And then we'll output to a geodatabase. And in this case, we will not dissolve our buffers. So we'll have the same number of buffers that we have the same number of input features. So in this example, we've got four points, so the result will be four buffered polygons, and they may or may not overlap. And then just OK. OK, so the result are overlapping polygons, and if we look at the attribute table, we've got the original buffer distance for every polygon, and then basically we've got the area and length of each polygon because they output to a geodatabase. Okay, one problem is if you don't dissolve, you let's say you have 20,000 points, you'd have 20,000 polygons. And you may only be interested in, okay, for all the points, I just want to know the area within 0.6 meters of the points. So in that case, we might want to buffer using dissolve. So we'll rerun the buffer tool from results tab. And then this time we'll dissolve all. 
So that will create one polygon representing, if you're inside that polygon, you're within 0.6 meters of one of the original points. So now we've got a dissolved polygon, and if we look at it, it's just one polygon. And it represents, if you're anywhere in that polygon, you're within 0.6 meters of a point location from our original four points. Okay, when you buffer lines, you can buffer either the right side of the line, the left side of the line, or both sides of the line. And in order to determine where is the right side of the line versus the left side of the line, you need to know the direction of the line. So we'll symbolize this line and we'll say put an arrow at the end of the line. So arrow at end. So this is the end of the line. So this will be considered the right side of the line. And this is considered the left side of the line. So once again, we'll run the buffer tool. And this time we'll say let's buffer only on the left side of the line. So in the buffer tool, there's a side type. So full would be buffer both sides of the line. So here we're going to say only buffer the left side of the line. And then we've got our end type. So either we could have it rounded or flat. So we'll choose flat as an example. And then just OK. So here it buffered the left side of the line. And at the end, it's flat. And if we pull up the results tab, we'll redo that. And then this time we'll say buffer round at the end of the line. And then OK. So here's an example where the line is buffered and it's round at the end of the line. So from here to here is 0.6 meters. And then one more time, we'll buffer round at the end of the line and do a full buffer. So now if you're anywhere in this polygon, you're within 0.6 meters of a line. So if I'm here, I'm within 0.6 meters of a line. If I'm here, I'm within 0.6 meters of a line. Okay, when buffering polygons, we could select outside only to buffer only from the edge of the polygon outside. So here we'll buffer this original left side line buffer, and we'll buffer it um, a tenth of a meter, and for side type, we'll choose outside only, and then just OK. So then we've got a ring that's outside only, and if we use the measure tool, this was our original polygon edge, so that is 0 0.10 meters width of that polygon, as opposed to if we pull up the results and we choose, instead of outside only, do a full buffer, and then OK. So a full buffer includes our original polygon that was buffered. So now we've got, if we're anywhere here, we're within 0.1 meters of our original polygon. And if we're anywhere here, we're within 0.1 meters of our original polygon. So there's our original polygon. And then you might want to also buffer inside only. So how do we buffer inside only? So to buffer inside a polygon, you would specify a negative value. So here we're going to do a negative 0.1 meters inside our original polygon, and then just OK. So now we have a buffer representing we're inside the original polygon. So here's the original polygon. And anywhere in this buffer, you're at least 0.1 meters away from the edge of the original polygon. So here, once again, is the original polygon. OK, so the two most common tools we're going to use for asking distance questions will be the buffer tool. If we're interested in some fixed distance or a threshold distance, and the generate near table tool, if we want to know what's the nearest distance and what's the nearest distance to um, one or more features. OK, and in the next video session, I'll teach you about tools that are used for overlaying of um, two or more layers.